I think uh, I could just share not about uh, what we call important CEOs of our store, the store managers. You know, we were trying to increase the number of women who are in the organization at our store to become store managers. We had this uh, conversation with the partners in Delhi. And you'll be surprised that most of the guys said, you know, to be a shift supervisor or a store manager of a Starbucks store, you need to do a night shift. You need to close and open stores. And even in a city like Delhi, we thought the response from women is going to be, you know, when we don't feel safe traveling late, et cetera. Those were the issues that were in our head as management. But when we started talking to the women and their stakeholders, their parents or maybe in-laws or husbands, it had nothing to do with safety. They just said that, you know, I didn't know that I could do it because I thought that I had to do a night shift to become a store manager. And once the dialogue started, you know, most of the men in our stores said, it's great to have a woman at the night shift. We'll make arrangements to get them home because the customers coming in now feel safer. Just the fact having women at the stores. So it's, it's a dialogue. You know, sometimes you have preconceived notions about how women think. They, yes, they did think that that was important to be a store manager. But the dialogue that we have started really opens it up. So I think it's a journey that you have to take as an organization. You've got to involve their families and them. And I don't think that uh, the men are very harsh or, you know, you, you, or they believe that 30% is off. I think men realize you have to give 100%. It's just that they apply for the job or anybody who thinks that they're 30% good and can get it generally doesn't get the job. Yeah, but I think the question uh, and the point I think Devjani had made is valid that men will put their hand up quicker f to equally capable people. The man will put his hand up quicker than the woman will because she will think harder about it and will actually downplay her capability in her own head. So we are our own glass ceilings. And if we recognize that, we should put our hands up fast and that is some of the training. And I know, and you're right. And so the training that we provide is that. Recognize that you are as prepared as the other and the organization will mentor and handhold you through it. So that confidence building and Actually, you know, I love telling the story because, you know, every time one, I would head to the loo, there would be some guy who would pop out of a cabin and try and accompany maybe even into the loo if he could, <laughs> pushing his cause. And the women who could follow you in there never did. Because guys push their cause much harder than the women do. And that's another factor which women have to learn to not just believe that they will be recognized for their capability, because, of course, a good organization should do that. But you do also have to push your cause a bit. And I think uh, uh, you will see that in the, uh, the writings in the book, that there is respect for ambition. The women say that, you know, it's not bad to be ambitious. It's not bad to push. And, in fact, in one of the cases, Rupa Kudva, I think, actually did a PowerPoint presentation to her boss as to why she should get the job. I don't think I could have the courage to do that. <laughs> And hey, she got it, yeah? So, so you do also have uh, the result that pays off for the women who do push their cause. And I think Devjani has also mentioned in it that it's only a glass ceiling after all, you can break it. So. Yes, please. Hello, I'm Dinesh. How successful are you, uh, in spite of your successful careers, how successful are you uh, at taking care of your chil needs of your children and mentoring them? <laughs> You'll have to ask the children that. Uh, I can tell you how my daughter answers it. Because uh, when, you know, I, I did ask her the question, so, do you know, did you miss me when I wasn't around, etc. And the answer I got was, thank God you weren't. Yeah? <laughs> so, so the fact is they get used to, you know, what, where you are. As long as you're there for them when they need you, uh, it's okay. And uh, the results, I guess, show for themselves. Uh, Actually, I Avni was... I my children for anything. Avni was sharing a study which spoke about uh, children of working women. Yeah, I think it's a recent Howard study that actually demonstrates that uh, working women who raise boys, uh, those guys are more successful, more sensitive, and they respect women. And the girls are uh, better, uh, you know, just successful at what they do. So there are actual studies that show that. 
And I think uh, we have a fixed notion that because our mothers were there 24 by 7 at our beck and call, that our children want that. I think children today have a different perspective of life. I mean, you look at a five-year-old, he knows how to operate an iPhone or an iPad. I'm sure when we were five, we didn't understand even a remote control. So I think biologically also the human race has transformed. Okay. On that note, I think all of us will clap to you and to clap to the wonderful audience. Thank you. I have thoroughly enjoyed this session. I hope all of you have. We have true leaders amongst us today on the stage. I request our chairperson, Ms. Rekha Lahoti, to give the mementos to the speakers in appreciation. Now we'll have a senior vice chair, Padma Raj Gopal, to give her vote of thanks. Hope you all had an inf informative and an inspiring power pack experience tonight. It is said, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. We cannot succeed when half of us are held back. Women leaders are more inclusive of team members. They work to strengthen different personalities, they foster innovation with collaboration. Doing what you like is freedom. Liking what you do is happiness. Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence, and that impact lasts even in your absence. We wholeheartedly thank our speakers, Ms. Naina, Ms. Devdrani, she just had to leave, Ms. Avani, Ms. Shanti, Ms. Preeti, and Mrs. Vijayalakshmi for spontaneously accepting our request for you to be here tonight. Your interaction with our members is an amazing learning experience. Ms. Uma Sudhir, you've been a brilliant moderator, and thank you for being here tonight. I would like to thank Taj Krishna for hosting us, the media for being uh, very supportive of us, of all our events, and all our members and their spouses. Please join us for dinner. <laughs> <laughs>